Hey everybody, Dave Webster here with Identity Crisis Design. I'm gonna do a gold leaf demonstration for you guys today. I want to demonstrate the Spinster Turning Tool solution. Uh, I've sold a couple and I got some questions uh, from one gentleman about uh, the performance of the tool and we went back and forth and I was looking at some pictures and um, it looked to me like uh, his uh, size had not uh, dried correctly uh, or enough. And uh, it occurred to me that uh, if I'm gonna be selling these things, I should probably do a demonstration of correct gold leaf and not just here, here's this tool and dump it in your lap. So today I'm using a Ducks Quick Dry Gilding Size. It's in this gold can. And uh, the directions are you use it as the consistency that's in the can. Uh, if any thinning needs to be done, you use mineral spirits. And that's basically it. It's this stuff. And if you want it to be thinner, sometimes you do. I might, uh, I've, I've sprayed uh, Guild uh, before, you know, if I, I've done some complicated graphics like a uh, Marine Corps logo, say, for instance, you know, and it's something that you want to uh, spray through a mask, I might thin it out with mineral spirits, but then um, I will also spray a spot off of, uh, um, off of the art so that I can uh, check the consistency of the size so to make sure that it's right, right for gilding. And we're going to do the same thing here. So I'm just going to do uh, two of these. Uh, one over here. Basically, I'm 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 just gonna mop this in. And um, for anybody who's curious, what I'm using here, I'm using a size 16 Quinn Mac. Uh, it, it is a great lettering brush. It's also one of the widest brushes that I have. Um, so I want to be able to cover this area as uh, efficiently as possible. Now you don't have to, you know, flood it. Um, but what basically happens is, um, you know, when, while it's wet, um, these brush strokes will, will, they'll, they'll settle out. Yeah. You can see some, some brush strokes there. You can probably see some, uh, some dust as well. I've got two, uh, two bands going here. One of them is going to be, uh, 24 karat gold. And the other one is going to be a, a heavier composite leaf. And um, the reason I'm doing that is because uh, one happens uh, before the other. Uh, okay, so this is how this works. You put your size down and then you walk away. You get a timer going. Something stuck in there. Get a timer going or um, you know, something that, that maybe 30, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes will go by so that you can come back and check, not so that you can come, can come back and gild. And this is what we're gonna do here. Um, I'm not gonna fill this whole thing in. I'm just gonna put a nice spot just like that, just right there. If I'm working on a customer project, because this stuff will wipe off fairly uh, easily. Um, when, when it's even when it's still fresh. So say I'm working on a, a hood or a fender, I'll, you know, paint in the size, okay? And then I, somewhere off to wherever else or that I'm, where I'm not working, I'll put a piece of this here and this is just for testing. This is what I'm gonna uh, play with, with my, get my knuckle test, my squeal test, and find out um, if this is ready for gilding. That way I'm not making thumbprints and knuckle marks in, in the stuff that I want to finish off. Uh, while this is drying, real quick, because uh, what I'm going to do is uh, take the time to go upstairs and make myself some smoothies. That takes about a, a half an hour if I'm doing three of them, if I'm doing it right. Got to stay healthy. Uh, but there is a, a little trick um, that uh, sign. Uh, pinstripers and sign painters will will do with their uh, will do with their size so that it shows up easier and they can see what they're doing. Uh, there's a color uh, imitation gold, which is kind of like that. It doesn't look like gold. There's no flake in it. It doesn't even look yellow. It kind of looks like that chamois color with a with a little bit of yellow and brown in it. But 
this will happen. You don't put a lot in. You just put enough in so that you can see the difference between um, th be between this essentially clear size and the black. This panel is sanded. Not everything that you gild is going to be sanded because not everything that you gild has to be sanded. This will work on a finished surface on a car. You put the gild down, the gild will stick to the clear, an unsanded, polished clear, and then you, the gold, and then you brush some, uh, some clear over it, some enamel clear, one shot clear. Um, sometimes you can visually get lost because you're looking at one glossy surface over another glossy surface. So you might put a little bit of color in it like this to see where you're going. On a lighter color, uh, you would put a couple of drops of black in it. Um, uh, now, Bill Beckner, this is one of his tricks because the logic between behind doing something like this is that this color is uh, chemically uh, similar to size. So you're not introducing a pigment from another color that's going to disagree with the size or uh, promote a lack of adhesion. Now, that's something that I've heard. Um, I'm not a chemist, so I don't know that that that's the case, but this is the preferred color imitation gold. Beckner says, and this makes a lot of sense, that when you're working with gold and you have um, what's called a holiday, sometimes you'll find a little hole in there and we might see one of these show up later. Having a little bit of black in your size on a lighter color is going to have that show up. The logic of having the imitation gold in there is that you don't see the holiday immediately and it's supposed to hide it. Uh, I prefer doing a black on a lighter color because I want to see where the hole is so that I can smash some gold in there and uh, maybe get it to, to stick a little bit. I don't want, I want gold and then I want gold. I don't want gold and then some imitation gold or what have you. This, I would mix this color in here just so that I can see what I'm doing on a glossy surface and then uh, that way it helps me avoid not gilding a spot. And that's just uh, to be over precautious. Uh, so that's the story on that. And now I'm gonna go make my smoothies. Okay, I'm back from uh, making my smoothie. Now what I've got here is, um, this is, you can feel it. You can see the marks in it. It's, <clears throat> it's sticky. It's too sticky for gold for 24 karat gold, but it isn't sticky, um, it, it, but it isn't too sticky for a heavier metal. I'm gonna use uh, copper on one part of it. Now, the, one of the reasons why you wanna make sure that, if not one of, it's like the main reason why you want your size to be the right consistency is because uh, if it's wet, if it's too wet, your gold will come out uh, dull and you don't want that to happen. And there's, there's no way to, uh, to, to fix it. The gold will sink in and, um, and, and not be as shiny. I mean, think about the way it looks here. It's nice and shiny on the, on the paper, you, uh, on, the, on the backing paper. You want it to look that way on your surface. I guess I can do another half of this an aluminum leaf. The copper has a little bit more of a, um, a give to it, and it's also a patent leaf, which means it's stuck to this page. Uh, the aluminum leaf that I have is not. Now, actually, this is a, this is a good reason why you want your, um, your size for your aluminum leaf to be a little bit more sticky because this leaf is thicker um, you need something to grab it more aggressively 24 karat gold leaf is so thin I'm just gonna do this this is how I like to press mine down by putting a um, putting a piece of uh, this backing paper or something else on top of it and then smoothing it out so I'm not rubbing all over the the leaf but I'll give you an example of what I mean. Uh, if this size was too dry, <clears throat> maybe I'll give you an example. If this size was too dry, I would see how I'm, I'm able to pull some of it away 
from the from the size right there. Now that that right there is because of the direction that I'm pulling it. Okay, and that's just that's just being stupid, and I'm trying to get it to come off. But um, when it's stuck on there, and you're you know you're pulling on it the the right way, you pull it away. You know you kind of you have to you, you, you want to tear it off, and uh, the size being nice and uh, you know stickier than it would be for 24 karat gold. We're still going to wait on this side here is so that you can actually get it to stick. Heavier leaf requires a, uh, a stickier glue, and as the size, <clears throat> as it dries, it becomes less and less sticky. So that's on there. Let's see. I'll try to be careful not to get some of this on the other, on the other size. Um, keep it nice and clean. So basically what's happening here is, is um, if you saw that one piece of aluminum leaf that was stuck in this area and then I've got another piece that it, it kind of overlapped it and, I'm, and I'm, I'm getting rid of the excess here and I'm moving the brush sideways along the along the edge so that it you know the pieces that are um, that are sticking up will will tear off with the bristles of, of the brush so that's why I'm moving it kind of back and forth like this Uh, there's also uh, organic cotton, which um, used to be the type of thing that you find in your medicine bottles, um, but now anymore, and I think I saved it from when I used to vape. Um, you know, you twist up your, there you go, you twist up your your coils, and you drip your drip your vape juice on organic cotton. So. If you're looking for organic cotton to use in cleaning up your your gold leaf, now you can go to a vape shop and get uh, some cotton bacon or uh, something like that. So <clears throat> those are two ways to clean that up. Now I'm going to go ahead demonstrate because I I feel like a. I feel like this is a, a, a pretty good, I think it's pretty solid, and we'll, and we'll find out. Um, you know, I know that I have a tendency to be uh, impatient with stuff. And um, sometimes I get at this stuff a little bit too early, and I think that's, that's um, it's a, a lot of artists will do that. They'll have this FOMO, a fear of missing out, or, or a, a fear of the point of no return. So... But I did have a question about that on uh, my Facebook page. Guy wanted to know, um, you know, how long, you know, do you wait? And it honestly is, it's a matter of feel, you know. Um, what happens is your, your size will go down and it'll be, it'll be wet. And then it'll, it'll kind of get up to this one point here and it will, and, and the substance will actually like plateau for a little bit. So it'll, it'll dry to a point and then kind of stay there for a little bit before it finally naturally just kicks over and does its thing. Now <clears throat> with the, uh, with the spinster tool, I'll show a picture of, of what you get, but for right now, it's just going to be in my hands. Each one of these comes with an O ring so that you can wrap velvet around this thick sanding pad here. I believe uh, when I first started putting these together for myself, I was using 3,000, but I packed them with a 4,000 grit, which is, high, is as high as I can get in this nice uh, thick sanding pad. And um, the thickness of the sanding pad is what's vital. So we have uh, an attached, uh, we attach it with, with Velcro and it stays on there real nice. It's real nice and convenient. The uh, shaft is designed uh, in a hex so that, um, um, and again, this is me being uh, overly cautious, but I know there's those times where you've used a, uh, a drill with a round drill bit and, uh, and, and it doesn't have that hex grip on the end and it starts to spin around in the chuck and it's no good. But also, <clears throat> I wanted to be able to use it in these automatic screwdrivers. You know, you can use it like this, okay, and it'll it'll stay in there. This is a Craftsman. You could use a Milwaukee. It doesn't matter what brand it is, but these 
you know, automatic screwdrivers, but I pack them with these so that, well, did I do that right? Yeah, so it stays in there just like that. And it's magnetic so that your, your top or your, uh, yeah, it just sticks in there right that, like that. And then you're off and running. So I'm gonna give this a shot here and hopefully our, let's move this light around. See, that might be the, the best shot right there. And hopefully my size is dry and, I've, and I've, I've put my leaf on at the right time and I should be able to start spinning this right away. I'm not gonna put a lot of pressure on, I'm not gonna like put my weight on it. I'm just gonna give it uh, you know, a, a little tension so that this sanding disc, which is what you use on composite leaf, will do its thing. Also, I'm on high. I like to start on low. Okay, I'm happy with the way that's turning out. Now, and, and now I'm being a little bit more critical. I think that maybe I could have waited a little bit longer. It's not dull. Um, but I'm just, you know, we are all trying to, you know, be the best artist we can be. So um, I'm going to use this. And, you know, one of the other convenient things about this, I'm going to take this out. I'm going to throw this one in, this little little guy here, and get some smaller. Smaller turnings. Okay. <clears throat> now, somebody had uh, said on, uh, I've been posting this on Facebook and a bunch of different groups, and somebody had, had said, uh, made a remark about um, you know, doing it by hand. You know, they, they, it's, it's better if you do it by hand, and which is fine, whatever, it's up to you. There's nothing saying that you have to put this in the drill. Now, I've never hand spun anything on composite leaf. I have hand spun on gold leaf, which is the traditional way of doing it. Um, so this is actually a first for me to, you know, to get in here with just a, just a hand tool and spin it. Voila. Now, I'm told that I'd be happier with the results. I honestly am having a hard time finding a difference. I'm gonna put in the, just click it in there. And put in this guy here and see what happens. Yeah, now on copper, it seems to be I mean, it's it's okay. It's showing up. I've got the light shining right at it, so it's, it's showing up the way it's. Oh, I'm sorry. Supposed to, but I do prefer. Yeah, I honestly don't know that it makes a difference whether I'm doing it by hand or not. <clears throat> I'll just pick this up try to not blind you and show you the results. Okay, we've got, that's what we're looking at, some spun leaf there. Okay, now I still don't feel like, I still don't feel like I need to gild this side over here yet. It still feels a little bit sticky, so I'm gonna wait a couple more minutes and come back and put some 24 karat gold and show you how to work the spinster tool for that. Okay, everybody, it's been a couple minutes. Um, you can see here, um, I've got my stuff spun over there. I'm, I'm feeling this is actually feeling kind of solid to me, but it's rubbery. It's not necessarily uh, sticky, it just feels soft. So, 
And the, again, the reason why we wait uh, longer is because we want the gold to be as shiny as possible. So I've got some 24 karat patent leaf. Patent being that it's stuck to this paper. Loose leaf would be much like the aluminum leaf. It just, it comes off on its own and uh, you have to pick it up with a different brush. Um, I'm not gonna get into that on, on, on this video. So basically uh, just lay it down as, as flat as possible and uh, give it a little press there. Now you'll notice, you know, it's um, just comes right off the paper. It comes right off the backing paper. Um, and I'm not really even pressing hard. I'm just running, running my finger over it. Okay, so, and it looks like I've got something, something might have gotten stuck in the, um, in the size right there, I I don't doubt it. Um, this is this isn't um, the cleanest room in the house, and this it's an old house. It just sweats dust. Uh, there was a time where I actually had a uh, kind of a plastic a canopy stapled to the ceiling to help prevent something like that from happening, but um, you know, plastic static. You know, you're basically just creating more more problems. So all I'm doing here is just using these old pieces to um, kind of fill in these edges. Um, if you see, you know, if, if you you know you move around and um, try to catch the uh, the light in some different directions here. Oh, I see what that is. That's that's a piece of aluminum leaf that just landed there by mistake from when I was doing this over here. Yeah, so. Um, You'll notice right here along the edge there, that's called a holiday. I kind of expect that because I'm working along the edge of, uh, of the tape. So I might try to get in there with, um, with some of this leftover stuff. And, but you know, that's basically how you, how you fill a holiday. You, you see it, get some gold on there and you know, really press it in. And you can, you can press, you know, uh, harder than, than you would maybe on something like this. It was soft, you know, you don't want it to skid around and, and, um, and make a total mess of it. But this is, uh, where I, uh, I'm going to take the opportunity to show off the versatility of this, of this here tool. Uh, when it ships, it ships with velvet. And it ships with these O-rings that are made to fit inside this groove right here. And it may take a little bit of practice, but I'm basically I'm just holding this velvet on here corner to corner <clears throat> around the um, this drill extension. And I'm going to take the O-ring and slide it over until it fits inside that, that little groove. And that's all it is. And put it back in my, in fact, let's not do that. Let's, let's hand turn it. What you're supposed to do is a quarter turn should, should do the job. So let's see what happens. Well, let me move the light. Sorry about that. I'm like blinding you guys there. Spun. Okay. Or. This driver has two speeds. Throw it on low, throw it on high. Let's see what happens here. Now, I'm just kind of, I don't want to kill it. And I'm not actually, I mean, as I, as I look at this, I might, I might see some presence of the dust and the dirt, but I am not tearing through this, this gold. Um, the, the question that came across on, uh, on Facebook in one of the groups was, um, how long do you wait? 
And um, I had the same question not too long ago. It's it's it's, uh, it's a valid one. How long do you wait? And uh, I think the question um, that I was asking at the time was, am I spinning the gold? <clears throat> is it the actual metal that's turning, or is it that the uh, size underneath is still fresh and it's allowing the gold to move just a little bit? <clears throat> And I got two answers on that. One of them was it's the gold that you're spinning, and the obviously it's you know I like to spin it when it's fresh because I do think that um, it's uh, uh, it's harder to spin gold after this stuff has been set up. It's still um, uh, it's not done drying. You know, eventually this will lose all of its stickiness altogether and it'll become really hard. And I think that uh, the gold uses that in um, to, to get this look. It's not just that you're polishing the metal, but you're also just moving it just a little bit in that in that direction. Just to give you guys the uh, better understanding of how this how things can go wrong, I'm gonna press in here a little too hard with the velvet and show you what it looks like afterwards when uh, you actually tear through the gold. At least I'm gonna try to. Guess I gotta try harder. <laughs> it, it's actually improving, uh, improving my my turns have been too delicate in the past. Okay, that's a perfect, perfect example. Let's finish this out. Yeah, okay, there's some good examples here. All right, get this phone out of here. And... All right, so you see this. Now, I'm doing this on purpose. I'm like really cranking down on it just to get this effect. But if you're too harsh, you might see some of it here and here. This will also happen if you happen to, um, if you have to get something on the end of this, uh, on the end of your velvet. And that's no matter, you know, what tool you're using. Yeah, you can see little, like little skid marks where it's, where it's breaking through because I'm pressing too hard. Whereas this up here, and it looks like, depending on the angle that you're that you're looking, it looks like there might be some places that haven't been uh, haven't been spun. But I honestly think it's it's like an a like an illusion. You know, you got to make sure that you hold it hold it flat. I created this because I wanted there to be uh, some some versatility, and I wanted it to you know you can use it by hand. You can put it in a a power screwdriver if, if you want to. Um, it's got a nice nice thick sanding pad that you can wrap in velvet and switch between you know hard composite metal and 24 karat 12 karat metals like that. So that's the spinster. I'm gonna put this video together, send it out, and hopefully <clears throat> it works for all you guys. Talk to you later.